President Muhammadu Buhari, who was Nigeria's military head of state between December 1983 and August 1985, has given a number of reasons why he toppled the democratically elected government of the then president, the late Alaji Shehu Shagari. Buhari then, as a major general who was the general officer commanding of the 3rd Armored Division in Jos, Plato State, said in a letter that he led a revolution in Nigeria because of the staggering corruption, insecurity, and indiscipline in the government. Sahara reporters obtained Buhari's letter, which was dated January 6, 1984, and was addressed to Her Excellency, the then Prime Minister of Great Britain, Margaret Thatcher. Buhari's four-page letter was personally signed by him as Major General Muhammad Buhari, head of the Federal Military Government, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. Sahara reporters observed in the letter that Buhari identified collapsed economy, rising inflation, corruption in government, and the failure of the government to provide security for lives and property as the key ingredient that led to the revolution. Buhari's letter to Thatcher's reads, Recent events in Nigeria leading to a peaceful change of government must have evoked different reactions in various places, and I thought I should direct the personal communication to Your Excellency in order to acquaint you with the background to the intervention of the Nigeria Armed Forces. Here at home, the situation is well understood and the change of government has been received with the widest acclaim. Even in, the, in those circles which the obvious reasons and to lose most thoughts through the corrective measures being contemplated to resolve to restore the sense of decency and accountability in public life, the smooth takeover and the accompanying calm and general acquiescence has been more than salutary. When the last military administration voluntarily handed over power to civilians in 1979, it was with very high hopes for the future. The handed over exercise was carefully planned and faithfully executed. The 1979 constitution was promulgated. There was justifiable optimism that Nigeria was headed for an era of progress, unity and stability under a free and elected democratic government. However, so soon after the handing over in both the administrative and legislative organs of government, a myriad of public functionaries embarked on a systematic circumvention of most of the checks and balances entrenched in the constitution. Pervasive corruption entrenched combined with moral and financial indiscipline to ensure that millions of naira were stolen from the national coffers and stacked away in banks inside and outside the country by many unpatriotic citizens active, actively aided and abetted by certain unscrupulous foreign associates. He continued that the military intervention was unavoidable because the people grounded, the people groaned under the twin yoke of pervasive corruption, skyrocketing prices, and general insecurity of lives and property. He said what was left was quickly dissipated on loaded contracts and over invoicing of imports designed to allow generous kickbacks to government and political party functionaries. Approved and correct procedures were systematically undermined and the normal functioning of the government machinery deliberately perverted for personal gains. Individuals were becoming increasingly apprehensive of other person, personal security and the future seemed to hold little hope for improvement in the status quo. The majority of public functionaries at all levels freely engage themselves in irregularities with impunity since those at the top and supervisory grades were themselves known to be involved in corrupt practices and impropriety. Bribes and gratifications were contemptuously demanded and given. Visitors to our country were regularly confronted by the nauseating and ugly sight of on u of uniformed customs officials and policemen taking gratifications without qualms and so brazenly going so incompetence in the management of national resources 
resource led the nation to accumulate huge internal and external debt and to run into serious balance of payments difficulties. Government was fast losing the, its ability to pay off for the goods and services contracted or needed. The national economy tottered dangerously on the brink of collapse. Numerous industrial undertaking at this very moment on the verge of total collapse and many had been forced to close down for lack of raw materials. Thousands of workers have lost their jobs and the skeptical of large scale retrenchment has already appeared. The resultant scarcity of essential commodities was predictably accompanied by spiraling inflation. Frauds and embezzlement of public funds were committed with reckless abandon. Hired assassins and murderers were openly beginning to practice their trade in broad daylight. Perpetrators of corrupt practices resorted to harassing to cover their trail, resulting in callous destruction of several expensive public buildings and even loss of lives. Incidents of armed robbery multiplied and the state of general lawlessness heralding a chaotic state of affairs, possibly culminating in a bloody uprising and revolution was most imminent. Buhari closed his letter by noting that he needed Britain's cooperation to enable him to rid the, uh, the country of the several anomalies. In spite of the huge investments on the 1983 election, there is ample evidence that they were blatantly rigged all round. In reaction, politically motivated strikes engulfed several parts of the country, claiming several lives and destroying valuable property. The overall effect was a serious erosion on national stability. The attributes constituting the role of government were rendered meaningless, and political party leaders folded their arms in apparent helplessness, unwilling or unable to deal with the situation. In the circumstances, it would be unpatriotic not to act, something hard to give. We see a need to check the pervasive corruption and the heightened indiscipline and insecurity associated with it. The primary objective for our intervention is to, therefore, save the torturing nation from the imminent collapse, a patriotic rescue operation, he added. You can imagine what Buhari said as at then. What he said as at then. You can all imagine what this man said as at then. Compare it to what is happening now. Like I've always said, all of them, they are just using opportunity. This one will commit all manner of blunders. Other ones are on the waiting list for them to come in and do the worst things. You can imagine. You know, when we talk about this, nobody, none of them, they are not ready to make this country great. They are just there to make themselves great. To make their political parties great. Now, all that he has said now, and for you now to have seen all of those things, the first time he entered, he come as a democratic government. He came and it took him six months. Somebody who already knew all these things. And that was one of the, the reasons the confidence people had in him to for him to come. But at the end of the day, even 2019, a lot of said then say, Ah, this man is nothing. No. Nothing. No wonder any little thing. Oh, they want to topple this government. Because he knows what he has done in the past. He knows exactly what he has done in the past. Any little thing they want to topple my government. If you complain about things, the bad things that no, you want to tell us. No, he will tell you that uh, what is happening now is not it, it was not it's, it's not his fault that it was it is the fault of the PDP. He will never take responsibility. So what is happening? People should not complain, people should not talk. Oh, he expects Nigerians to be going back and be saying, Oh, good luck, come on. This is this problem we are facing now. Or PDP. Your 16 years of misrule, it is what is causing this. That we that is what they want. That Nigeria should be holding PDP since uh, we have come to uh, since 1999. We are now practicing democracy. They want us to hold PDP, even with all their own atrocities. Now they want Nigerians to be holding PDP re uh, uh, accountable or responsible for this whole thing. What kind of a people are these people? Are these their old age? See what they are still doing. Now, some people will tell you that, oh, he's an old person. Then why, why, what is he looking for? Oh, my goodness. You see? See, those who have been waiting here, hey, Nigeria go better, Nigeria go better. See, oh, see us at that time, oh, see all the things that we are experiencing now. They didn't just start now. It started since then, oh. And he's coming again. He came and he could not do anything. And he can't even do anything. 
No wonder any little thing they want to top his government. They complain. They want to top his government. Okay, after all these stories of yours, what is happening now? Nigeria is now more corrupt and insecure with economy in shambles and your nepotistic tendency is unbearable. A day shall come when the real owner of Nigeria will realize their mistakes and all the British Fulani drama in Nigeria will end. Make will continue. Unfortunately, President Buhari, 36 years after heading a coup that suspended the Nigeria constitution under the then presidential Shagari, is uh, conspicuously unimmersed, conspicuously enmeshed in the same story of corruption, seriously, job security, known insecurities on the highest levels. And there after Nigeria went into oblivion 30 years after you came back to unveil the traces, what is semblance? This man was the reason behind our present predicament. If not for his selfishness, our democracy would have matured beyond inconclusive elections. Buhari, why? You see, he's the one that tr truncated the democratically elected president. And now, now you are there now. Do what you, what you did talk, say you will do. You know if you do anything. They have given you eight years now. You can't see do anything. Oh, you, they will say, oh, you only spent a four or two years or three years or one year or a year and some months. Now, you have opportunity. Do what you want to do now with all the experiences we will don't get. Nothing. I know they will provide anything. They can't provide anything with all the experiences they gathered. All rubbish experience. Useless experience. And some people will be telling you that some people don't have structure. See all of them that have structure, they have experience. See what they are giving to you. You see? What has changed now? So guys, leave your comments below and let's have your take.